We're happy live. Thursday. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Yes. Thank you to all who have served and served. <clears throat> so sad. Yes. For those of you who are just joining us, Tass is giving away a Tesla. That's right. That's right. So, anyway. I know. I just I put, us, I put us in a private group, just, you know, so it's just us today. Perfect. I guess perfect. I guess our industry doesn't want to know what radio station their customers listen to. Right? Exactly. And there's details to that. Um, what what radio station do you listen to, Mets? I know you. I've been in the crowd. You don't listen to one radio station. You like scan the first three seconds of every possible radio station there is. <laughs> hey, I never denied having A D D H D H H A D. Um, Perry, how you doing? <laughs> You want to share this to a public public group, public page? All right. All right. Anyway, say hello if you're there just so we can see if this is working. All right. Anyway, Tass, you got seven weeks left of the year, six, seven weeks. Mm -hmm. How's it looking? The same six or seven weeks you guys have left of the year. Do you, do you want to tell everybody, all eight people on right now, do you want to tell them how many students you enrolled this last weekend at one location? We could do that. We could do that. Or you want to wait till it gets to 50. You need to wait till we get more people on. Invite oh. your friends, everybody. All right. Invite your friends. I'm going to give them the good news and the bad news. I'll give them the bad news first and the good news. Okay. Let's let's start. Let let's start since people are just jumping on. Start with the bad news. Well, you know we're big proponents of mass intros, regardless of how you do them. And um, with the bounce back, we got our, our we had uh, two uh, two courses we did at the elementary school level, and we did not put a cap on these programs. So one school, we had 49 students participate in a two week course, character education course after school. And then the other school, um, we just got inundated. We had 131 people participate in a three week course. And the reason we did that is so we could stagger out when the graduations happen from one for one weekend and then for the other school the following weekend. So we didn't have them all in the same weekend, right? Now we had several graduations because we would never put 50 people in a graduation. We like 20 or less in a graduation, so we spread them out. So the first one we had, we had 49 people in the program. Uh, 35 people actually showed up for the graduation, which we would call our mass intro. And out of those 35, we had nine students that enrolled, right? Which for us is, on a percentage standpoint, is horrible for us. But anytime you enroll nine students in one day, it's a great day. So I want to be clear about that. And that's nine, that's nine students you enrolled on a one-year agreement. That's correct. Yeah, a 12-month program. That's exactly right. So the, the, uh, the individual who did the, the, uh, the, 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 the mass intro really was very, very disappointed, right? Because based on previous numbers and things that we've done in the past, those were horrible, horrible numbers for this particular school. And my response was, Look, anytime that we enroll nine students in a day, it's a great day. I understand the numbers and percentage-wise were, were bad, but we also have to know that we say this to everybody, right? On average, we enroll 50% or more people uh, on, in a mass intro. Well, this was not at 50% clearly. So let me fast forward to the following weekend. 131 people in the program. Out of the 131, this is why you don't have this many people in a mass intro. Trying to communicate and get excitement and get everybody to come to your mass intro can be very difficult. So we had 56 people that actually showed up of the 131 people, but they enrolled 46 of the 56 on one year programs this last weekend. So over the course of those two weekends, it was 54 new students in the school, which is phenomenal. Right. So as you guys listen to this, 
you hear our stories, you know, and we he told his 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 failure story earlier. But again, as you get better in, in running your business, a failure story would sound like a success story to a lot of other people. Right. Um, but we compare it to what we are capable of doing and what we know we can do and what we typically do. So nine new students in one day, I think anyone on here would be pleased with it. But last weekend, one location, 46 new enrollments on one year programs at the one location. Can you, some of you imagine getting 46 new students in one weekend, you know? And he says one weekend, because when you have that many people coming to a, 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 a mass enrollment, okay, uh, you have to space it out. You can't do them all at once. So you did Saturday and Sunday, right, Taz? We did Friday night, I think three on Saturday and two on Sunday. There you go. So over the weekend, 46 new enrollments. Um, now, based on your 46 plus new enrollments, what wisdom can you share about onboarding that many new white belts? That's a great question because there are, by the way, we're going to get into the radio station deal here, everyone, but this is just a, a bonus here to excite you and, and understand. And I think the story, the, the failure story that you told earlier um, is important because what happens is, is if some of you have tried a mass intro and you've never done one before, and uh, thanks, Kling, or you could say to Kling, thanks. Oh, uh, thanks, Kling. Um, but what happens is, is if you've never done a mass enrollment before and you do one and you work, you work your butt off to do it and you don't get the results that you want, a lot of you will stop and you'll be like, they just don't work for me. They don't work for me. And you won't keep pushing or trying to figure out how we can improve. <laughs> Before you answer some of these questions up here, I want to let you know that your instructor at this particular school, when he enrolled nine students two weekends ago out of 36 or something, he apologized and said, this will never happen again. And I know what I got to fix and I know what I got to do. That is the attitude and the mindset that you need to have. And then the next weekend he enrolls 46 out of 56 people on a one year agreement. So now based on your, your, uh, your enrollments, how do you onboard that many new white belts? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. I don't know. That's just, it's going to be interesting. What other questions do we have? <laughs> Um, no, Mr. Johnson, great question. So, you know, one of the things I think that, and, and I'm gonna, I, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this, but I think it's important to know this, that when we do the mass intro, number one, when we're enrolling them that day, we make sure that we put down what day they're going to be in there for class and say, look, it's a bit crazy today, but I do want to sit down with you and find out exactly what you're hoping for your child to accomplish with our program. When will you be in for class? And so we, we knew that 18 or 20 people were coming in at these classes on Monday. The other people were coming in the classes on Tuesday. So we knew when they were coming in, number one. Number two, you need to text message and call and confirm and say, look, we're excited to see Johnny for his first class today. Can't wait to see you guys. To, keep, to, to prevent that buyer's remorse, because at the mass intro, if you guys really dive into the details, you know that we tell people, look, if you're not sure what to do, go ahead and get started today. And if for whatever reason, you bring your spouse or significant other back to class with you next week, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. If it's not the best thing you've ever, you know, done for your child, let us know. We'll cancel your program. No questions asked. So we really have to work hard that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to prevent any cancellations from happening over the course of the weekend. Now, when you enroll this many people, you're going to have cancellations. I mean, it's just part of the thing, part of what's going to happen. I think we're at like five or six people that actually canceled. So we may have netted 41 new students instead of 46 new students off of that deal, which I'm totally fine with, right? Um, so now the next step is, is what else do we do? Well, we've got to be doing welcome calls. We've got to be doing welcome cards. We've got to make sure that we're doing awesome calls and awesome. This is why when people say, well, how do you have full-time employees? What do they do? Well, this is an example of what they do on those non-prime time hours when we're not teaching from four to eight, when we come in at one o'clock, these are the things that are happening behind the scenes to cement these things in, cement these people in and keep them on board. And of course, teaching great classes, you know, these are, and by the way, these are small things. You know, my instructor over that school said, hey, just want to let you know, you know, is very diligent and he always does this, but he usually has a leadership team student do it. I was at the front door. I was holding the front door for people when they were coming in. I was holding the door for people when they were leaving. 
asking what class, when would I would see them again? So, you know, you guys got to just think about what are the things that you would do to try and keep a student and what would be a great level of customer service and then start with those things in your school. Um, obviously, we've got to teach great classes. Obviously, we've got to make sure we have enough assistance to be able to help out, that we're communicating with the parents in the lobby, not just to the students on the floor, building rapport. I mean, there's a whole list of things, but what we don't do is get 46 new students, cross our fingers, and hope they're going to stay. Meetings, when I say meetings, I also want to be clear about this. We're big on scheduling, but when you have 46 people, you don't schedule people for a meeting. Your program director would be out in that lobby for every beginner class that week and literally just be pulling parents in the office, spending five or 10 minutes, find out what they want to accomplish, going through the new student checklist, making sure they're doing those things. We're not gonna to wait to schedule somebody. We're gonna be proactive and we're just gonna grab them and start pulling the office. The goal for us was to get at least three parents in every single beginner class that we're doing the new student checklist with, and that we're making sure we find out what they're there to accomplish. So you have plenty of beginner classes a week, by the way. That's the other thing is class schedule. Knowing where your class schedule is, we made sure that we let, let everyone know if classes were very large and very large is relative. So if we, for example, we have a four o'clock beginner class and a 550. Our 550 class is always busy. There's 20 some kids in that class always. So if there's 30 kids in that class, it's not going to look like, oh my God, it's so busy. But in our four o'clock class, when you have four or five students in that class and it goes to 25 students, that class now appears to be extremely large in comparison to what it was. So we make sure that we call the, call the elephant in the room. Let everybody know that we had this unbelievable program with the elementary school. We're so excited. We feel all the energy in the room and, uh, and then things are going to be great. So those are some basic things. And by the way, everybody, this is important. If you have a mass enrollment, and again, for those of you just tuning in, we were just talking about Mr. Tossel's uh, mass intro last weekend, and they signed up 46 new students at one location on, on one-year programs. And somebody had asked, how do you onboard all those new white belts? So what happens is, is from history and, and, and learning and experience, we put a lot of focus in, in onboarding and, and taking care of all those new white belts. But what Tassel was just saying is you cannot forget about the current students who were in the class enjoying their little class of, you know, 10 students in the white belt only class. And all of a sudden now there's 25 or 30. You got to make sure you're taking care of those other students who all of a sudden feel overwhelmed and, and they were used to these small little classes, but possibly, and they see this huge influx. So he says you call out the elephant in the room by not ignoring that and making mention of it and then getting on the phone with them as well and saying, hey, we're so excited. But you, it, there is work involved for sure when you're managing that big of an influx of students into, into your school. Um, but it's a good problem to have. It's a better problem to have than having no influx of new students into your school, right? But you gotta know how to manage both of those. And then how frequently are you doing the mass intros with this type of number, weekly, monthly? Well, Mr. Olson, a great question. So these were the, you know, and I say this because I want to understand this, right? We we do struggle with with Facebook ads, right? That's a struggle for us uh, in comparison to what other schools are generating on with Facebook leads. So this is this for us was a great opportunity to go do one of the five levels of marketing, which is face to face, which is what we love doing the best, right? And be able to get in front of our audience. And we've had a relationship with the schools for years. We actually created this relationship with this particular school happened uh, about two, two and a half years ago, right before COVID. That relationship has grown, grown stronger. So we're always looking to create relationships with new schools. This hap this 131 students happened to be a new school. The other school was a school that we've been in for, for years, but we always keep the relationship. We make sure that we, we try and cre create the new relationship. But the answer to your question is this. These were the first two elementary school mass intros that we did for the year. So those are the first two. Now we have three other ones, but we've put them off, pushed them off until the turn of the year in January so that we can kind of get our head above water to make sure we're taking care of all these people. And then in January, we'll have two or three more mass intros. But I would recommend this. Do not do what we did. Do not have 131 people in a course. It's not the right thing to do. The better way to do that would be to have a maximum of 50 people. So it becomes a manageable number for you. You can schedule a few mass intros, 
And if there's an overwhelming response, you can always book another two week course and get another 30 or 40 kids. But that those would meet on a separate day with a separate graduation. It's just too many people to try and call. We have several calls that we, we have three calls that we make over the course of the of this two to three week course that we do with them. The welcome call, the check in call. And then, of course, making sure that we know how many people are coming to the graduation. So it's a lot of phone calls to make and actually connect with people, which is why if you did 40 or 50 as a max, that would be a way more manageable number. Um, so that would be my recommendation to you. So that's we're just we just got out of the gates Our other location, I think, had 30, 30 some kids in, in, in a mass intro. Um, but those can be done. I mean, I personally, I would tell you, I, I like to have six to eight elementary schools that you work with and do one mass intro per month with those elementary schools over the course of the school year. I think that's the perfect mix. So just curious, everybody, can you put in the chat box, what is your record uh, as far as how many people have you enrolled in one day or let's say a weekend, right? What's the record as far as how many students you've enrolled at, at one time? What do we got here? What are we looking at? And then this is a great question as well, but I just want to see what do anybody want to share? And Tass, you know, yep. this is why we say, you know, how mass intros can change the game. Mass enrollments can change the game quickly. quickly. You know, if you need bodies in your school, um, this is the fastest way to do it. Mass enrollments does not bring the same kind of revenue into your school because of the deal that you give to them if they enroll that day now there's no deal on their on their tuition payments it's just starting so you don't get the enrollments but you definitely get your pop of uh of of new bodies miss chris with 31. look at that look at that 35 18 7 7 net students peter johnson 10 in one weekend uh, most in a day, 23. Good, Mr. Church. Steve Holly, 13. Never did a mass, always chose the hard way, but my record is now six. So, so listen, everyone, it, it's funny. You know, you got to ask yourself, what are you trying to do with your business? You know, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, I heard Perry, Perry and I had breakfast this morning. We had a meet on some things. <clears throat> And I heard him say this morning, you know, when he was talking to somebody, you don't need us. Thanks for coming by, Tess. We're going to miss you. You've been great, by the way, all these years. Um, you don't need us, right? Or you don't need a coach. Or you don't need a consultant. Because a lot of you could do what we have done. Figure it out. Well, 2001 is 30 years that we've been in business. 30 years. We could just get you there faster we could get you there much faster and avoid all the trial and error and the pitfalls if your goal for your business is to, to grow your business, not only through number of students that you want, but the, the thing that's just as important is revenue. So you can provide opportunities, not just for yourself as a school owner, but for your staff as well. So when you hear Tasso talk about uh, 46 new enrollments in one weekend, if you believe him, which I'm still a little skeptical, I have an audit going on right now, so I'll confirm it. But if you believe him, right, you should be completely engaged if you haven't talked to him before, right, and want to know exactly what did you do, right? So one question here is I know you've done, he's done uh, mass intros before, but what changed to get that improvement in enrollments from the one weekend where you got nine out of 35 to the next weekend where you got 46 out of 56. Well, let me give you a little behind the scenes. So when, when this particular person, right, did this mass intro, um, he, he was very frustrated, right? And he's like, I'm not sure what I did wrong and whatever. So I walked, uh, I walked in and, and talked to him, the therapist chair, yeah, the therapist chair in the back over there. Um, right, we just asked them to get out of the frame until we're done with the show. Then you yeah, right. Um, so it's I chatted with him. You, get some, you're, you see your therapist for compulsive lying about numbers. That's right. That's right. And I'm, I'm my own therapist. So I sit in the chair and I just talk to myself. That's great. Right. And I think it's normal, but go ahead. Yeah, right on. Um, but we did have a conversation and, and he was he was very hard on himself. 
And I just took a step back and I said, listen, because you got to remember, uh, three, four weeks before that, we had meet the teacher and he had a 90% enrollment rate. I mean, we enrolled between our, this is between two locations. Four weeks earlier, we had mass intros, five mass intros at two of our locations from meet the teacher. And it was 42 out of 50 something. It was like a 90% close rate, whatever it was. So I, and, and he's always done great with mass intros. And this happened to be just a fluke. And, and of course he was blaming himself, which I appreciate taking ownership for that, right? But at the end of the day, I've seen him do this so many times. And can we be off on a day? Sure. But here's my here's my take on it. It was just a bad day. It was just the stars didn't align for us. And we didn't get our 50% average or more. But if you look at the last three mass intros that we've done, from meet the teacher to the 9 out of 35 to the 46 out of 56, He's had about a 70 or 80 percent closing rate when you figure all of those mass intros together, which is why Met said earlier, if you fail that first time, some of us will just stop. And that's when you need to push forward because you're going to learn from your experience and you're going to all of a sudden the floodgates are going to open for you. So I'm not sure that anything really you know, happened other than he was aware of it. I do know that he went back and he re and by the way, he's done this literally hundreds of times. Right. He went back to review to make sure he wasn't missing any points. And that's what happens. And he went back with a vengeance and he was, he wanted to take ownership. And, you know, if people were on the fence, he would push him to get him on and get him on board. So that's, that's really what happened. I don't know that there was anything that was necessarily that off, but sometimes it's those small details that make a huge difference in, in a mass intro. Um, I hope that makes sense. Vince. No. Okay. Good. Um, but but uh, but listen, here's the next thing, right? Uh, you have one set up this Saturday, and you have 10 coming already from coloring sheets, right? So if you remember, this is a lesson for everybody here. So first of all, you know when we talk about coloring sheets? We've done shows on this. We've given you coloring sheets for free giveaways for the holidays. We do one for... Um, every, every holiday. Halloween. Thanks, thank yeah, Halloween, thanks. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Um, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day. I mean, almost every the eight out of the twelve months, there's a coloring sheet for it. And there's and there's some of you who are like, ah, I'm not going to do that, and that's fine, and that's okay. But right now, ten people are coming from the coloring sheet. So what you got to do is you got to work backwards. So you have coming, you, you have a mass enrollment coming up Saturday. You have ten people coming from the coloring sheets because you put it out there that you we have a special focus class or confidence class or free community event or however you promoted that. But we don't want to just rely on the coloring sheets. So if we know we're going to be there Saturday doing a free event, right, to, to enroll students or to expose them to the values and benefits of a martial arts, of martial arts training, you, you got to pick up the phone and start calling every lead that you have that has not enrolled and say, look, I know you inquired at one point. We happen to be having a free community event this Saturday on goal setting or whatever it is. And we have a few spots still available. We're going to have pizza. It shouldn't take longer than an hour. We're going to do a fun martial arts class. It'll give you an opportunity to really see the values and benefits of the program. Plus, give your son, Johnny, an opportunity to um, see if this is something he would enjoy or she would enjoy. Would you like to reserve a spot and come this Saturday for our event? Well, you could take that 10 to 15 or 20, right? And and then it just ups your percentages on how many students you guys can enroll. But again, I'm just talking as if I'm assuming that everybody watching this right now wants to get more students. But everybody wants, not everybody's willing to work, right? It's not, can you do it? It's, will you do it? And that's up to you, right? I, I, I'm so passionate. We talk about this all the time about uh, people don't know what they don't know, right? And we settle or we're doing good enough so we don't go above and beyond because we don't want to work harder or, or put more effort out into what we're already doing because we're living a very good life, let's just say. But it's only because you don't know what else life has to offer or what you can offer your employees or your team members, your instructors, your program directors. It, that that's the drive. And, and I've said this a million times. I would say at least I would say we average once a month 
somebody flies into Orlando and they want to come and visit our schools. It's an open door. Come and see it and and uh, take a look at our, our, our operations, see our team, see our staff, the careers that they're making, but do whatever you got to do to inspire yourself to push and go that extra mile when some of you have been doing the same thing for 15, 20 years and you're just there, you're, you're making a living. We got to go above and beyond just making a living. Start making other people a living. My Mets, let me let me put this in perspective. I was just pulling up our, our our company performance sheet here from, and I went back a couple of years, right? So, someone said, "Well, how do you get that many people to come in? Where'd you advertise?" You know, well, what we did was a two or three week character education course within the elementary schools. Now, keep in mind, this is my second location. I have been on these guys for four or five years to get into the elementary schools, get in the elementary schools, and it was. We just didn't do it. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. So if I tell you this, and I just told you guys, we signed up 46 out of 56 students on a one-year program. Last, last weekend. weekend yeah. Last weekend, just to be clear. When I go to my cut, watch this. In 2019, hell, I'll do it for all these. In uh, 20, where are we here? Let me do this. Yeah, 2019, that school, you ready for this, Mets? Signed up 68 students all year, all year. In 2020, that school signed up 41 students all year. So when we tell you about getting the school system and doing mass intros, this is why I've been telling this to my own team because I understand the results that are going to happen. And now they're in four or five, five schools now. This is going to skyrocket the enrollments over the course of the year. Because they've had great retention at that school, that's been fantastic. That's the reason we were able to survive on lesser enrollments. But now we're going to have this absolute burst of new students while continuing to work on great retention. And this is where we see big pops in the school. So just know, like, when you guys look at this, go, well, he's a consultant. He's been doing it. My own team, I've been telling to do this for years. And when you see 68 enrollments in one year, and 41 enrollments in one year. And yes, it was a COVID year, right? But nonetheless, compared to 46 enrollments in one weekend, it's incredible what can happen if we get focused on this mass intro mentality. So that's, I want to make sure that I'm clear about that. So people don't think like, oh, well, he's always doing, they're always doing those things. And it's just not the case, right? And by the way, um, that's what we do. We're an open book. We're not going to just tell you that we get everything right, do everything. There you go. 68 new students in 2019 for the whole year, 46 just last weekend. Right. I mean, there is no limit. You know, there there is no limit on what you can do with your business. Uh, and and just to say it again, you said it. How do you how did you get these people to come in? We get in the school systems and we set up these two-week courses and we charge $25 to do four classes over two weeks, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. And we donate 100% of that money, that $25, back to the school or the PTA or whoever they want it to go to. And so, because it's a marketing thing for us, it, we, we don't want $25, you know, for 100 kids. We don't want to make $2,500. We want to enroll 40 students, right? Which, by the way, what's the stu what, watch this now. 46 new students last weekend, everybody. What's the average student value at that school? 206 for the year. 206 per student per month over the course of, you know, for the well, year, that's the average monthly student value. So when you take 206, now remember, he said like five canceled. So out of the 46 enrollments, five canceled, let's just round it to 40. You take 206 times $40, that's an extra $8,240 a month of revenue in the school based on their average student value. That's not what he charges everybody. That's just how much revenue he generates. You're taking your gross divided by the amount of students you have because people sign up for events or private lesson packages or retail, blah, 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 blah. And with that many students, 206. So do you want do you want to fight over the, you know, the money, the $25? Or do you want to try to just bump up $8,000 a month in revenue? Or almost 100000 a year. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. And that's from one weekend, one weekend right now. We say one weekend, but it was really from th three weeks, maybe of planning, you know, 
getting in the schools, getting the flyers to market your program, two week course, right. and then and then do your mass intro. So, but real quickly, just so we can continue the discussion though, but the title of this was what radio station do your customers listen to? Well, you can't get any of these results unless you're very conscious of what radio station do your customers listen to. And it's the same radio station that we all listen to. And somebody put it in the in the comments when I posted it. WIIFM, what's in it for me? When you guys have a customer come in, you sometimes, a lot of us in the industry oftentimes talk too much about ourselves and what style we teach and where we came from and the master we have and how many degrees or trophies or, you know, we teach a real life self-defense system and we do that. Who cares? At the end of the day, what is it that your customer wants from you? That's what you need to talk about and be specific on how you're going to get them that result. If you guys talk about how your martial arts programs help kids do better in school and, and, and it's a blanket statement that you tell everybody when they come in, you know, and by the way, martial arts really helps with focus in school. Well, what if you're talking to a parent who has a kid who has a 4.0 GPA and who gets straight A's all the time? It's irrelevant information. We don't need to know that. Just tell me, how are you going to help me or my kid? But you don't know that until you ask them. And you need to ask them, what would you like to get out of this program? If it's an adult, what would you like to get out of this program? If they say self-defense, fitness, exercise, friendships, whatever it is that they say, or for their child, you have to ask them why. Why is that important to you? What does it mean to you if, if you got those things? They got to paint their own picture. Then be sincere and specific on why martial arts is the best thing to get that result. But you got to be specific. And when you do a mass enrollment and you have people tasked, how long was your average? How long was the average mass enrollment? How long were they in your building? Um, those, yeah, literally, I mean, the, the class itself, right? We usually start about five minutes late. That's because we got you know, people that straggle in. So we and we do a class for 30 minutes and we do the close for five minutes. So it's 40 minutes cover to cover. And then however long it takes us to get those people enrolled, which we obviously we do pizza at the end and we do that so we can keep them there long enough to get to the people. But I'm going to tell you guys this. We've always said 20 to 20, no more than 25 people to mass intro. And our guys like the sweet spot of 15 to 20. That's just what they feel like. They have a way higher enrollment percentage, so they like to keep those groups 15 to 20, um, and that's what they've been working off of. So it's an hour. From cover to cover, it's an hour. They're in and they're out. So listen, if you don't understand what the majority of customers want, how do you get a parent and a child who have never inquired about martial arts that saw a flyer in their elementary school and then they did this little program, this character education martial arts program, to come into your school and within one hour, sign up for a 12 month agreement to get their child in martial arts at 150 bucks a month or whatever it is. How do you do that? Right. You do that by understanding what your customers want. And then if you want to retain those customers, you have to deliver on your promise. But it's not just understanding what your customer wants. It's understanding how to paint the picture and really show them that we can give them what they want. And you got to be good at that. But again, you can't be good at something unless you 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 know. So when 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 we say do a mass enrollment, for example, uh, uh, when when you do a a mass intro, a lot of times you'll spend most of your time planning what techniques you're going to teach and how you're going to structure the class, as opposed to how are you going to deliver the the message to these parents who are only there for one hour that this is different, that this is different than another sport or activity. This is different. This is truly an educational facility. This is somewhere I really want my child to be because I can see how this is going to change their life potentially or really enhance it or improve it or be good for my child to be in this type of environment. Right. That's what you got to focus on when you're going to have people for one hour and if you want them to commit to you for, for a year or whatever programs you do. Right. A lot of times we, we, we think, you know, we're, we're thinking too short sighted, not big picture. Right. And so even going, that's what what's in it for the parents when they're there at the martial arts school. But back up a step. Well, what's in it for the elementary school? We see said it. We donate 
a hundred percent of the proceeds. So if we charge 25 bucks and a hundred people come, they just got $2,500. It's the easiest fundraiser they're ever going to do. But how did we get that participation rate? Because we actually did PE teacher for the day. Well, what's in it for them? Well, it's a great opportunity for the PE teacher to take a break and relax while we run all the kids through PE class for the day. There goes Matt. Sit, he's out of here too. Um, where they do a PE teacher for the day and, and be able to teach the kids and reinforce the kids our whole PBIS system, which is be respectful, be responsible, be safe. And we do that through the martial arts. So we're always thinking, how can we help the PE teachers? How can we help the elementary school? How can we frame it up so it's a good fit for them, a good fit for the elementary school, a good fit for the parent? And I'm honest and transparent. When we talk to, 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 to the schools or PTA, PTO, look, it's a triple win. It's a win for the students because they get to try martial arts for a very low price point. It's a win for you, the elementary school, because I'm telling you, it's the easiest fundraiser that you'll ever do. And number three, it's a win for us because when we donate our time and we come and teach the classes, the kids tend to get excited. And when, the, when they're done with the program, a lot of them want to continue and some are going to continue by us. And we just appreciate that. That's where the win is in it for us. So, and I'm just very transparent about that. So look, this is something where we stood with the assistant superintendent. This was for 2019. So this was January of 2020 and then COVID hit. We didn't do much last year. We've done stuff this year as we've got going. So look, this is the power of what you do when you give back. Orange County Public Schools, right? That's what we've donated to them, $25,000. $25,000 to the Orange County Public Schools. When you do that, the schools like you, right? And, and by the way, they should because it's a win. It's a win for the schools. It's a win for the students if you're providing a really good program. And then it's a win for you because you're getting all these, these new students, but you're getting these new students by exposing these parents and the community to martial arts and what it can do for, for, the, for the child or whoever. So that was a check that we presented and that was cash. That was a cash deal, $25,000, $26,000. So I don't, know that, I don't know that everybody on here realize, and I, I would be lying if I told you the numbers, but my, my sister now sits on the, on the PTA, PTO board. And I said, you know, we do these fundraiser programs for these schools and these two week courses. And I said, you know, we typically raise at least a thousand bucks for the school. She's like, oh my God, I need to get you come to come to my, my, my kid's school. And she's like, guess what we raised our PTA PTO. Guess what we raised in our last fundraiser. I said, I have no idea. 5,000 bucks. She goes, no, it was like, it was less than a hundred dollars. And it's, she's, it's the biggest pain because they're doing a lot of these things where they get the catalogs. They order from the catalog, they get the product, they got to get the product out to the parent. And then they got to pay the wholesale retail cost. And they end up with this small little fundraiser. That's a big hassle. This is, and I tell this to principals and PTA, PTA, it's the easiest fundraiser you'll ever do. Just give us a space and put the flyers out. You guys to make the money, you don't have to do a thing. And we're not wrong about that. And so this is why it's so exciting. I love Can-Am Kid on here. Schools still want, uh, want to wait until you get back to normal. I get that, right? Even in Wisconsin, south of me, right? Two hours south, that's the case in some of these schools. So you offer the coloring sheet instead. That's exactly what you need to be doing. You find a way to make this work and you go after it. If that doesn't work, we go after this and we just keep doing it. And I know Mr. Danny Hendrick on here who has 18 on his mass intro. I believe that was from this last weekend, which by the way, came from the coloring sheet. So this stuff absolutely works and you guys just need to find a way to work it. And instead of making excuses where I can't get in the schools, you guys took this and said, well, I'm gonna use the coloring sheets instead. And I'm going to use that as a way to generate people coming to my school, which is fantastic. And the other thing you can do, two things. The other thing you can do is go to the schools and say, look, can we do flyers? We'll do a character education course class uh, Saturday at our school. So you don't have to do a four class course. You could do one Saturday every week for four weeks if you want. Or you could just get the school to say we're, we're, we're doing a, a, a free martial arts character education course Saturday for free for all the kids. And then tell them that, look, it, you know, it, depending on how well you're a partner, if, if any parents decide they wanted to enroll their child in our school, which we're going to do the mass intro, we'll donate $50 for every child that, that enrolls in our school back to you guys. We can work together. But Perry just came in and wrote on the board, in the past month and a half, 
just in the past month and a half, we've given $6,000 to the schools. That's why I made this face. <laughs> so we're always donating, but you know who can't donate to the schools? The martial arts schools that don't have enough money to pay their own bills, that can't afford to donate this kind of money back to their community and their schools. Right. That's why profitability and revenue is so important. I mean, it's just so important to do that. But again, at the end of the day, you, you, you got to make sure that you're understanding what your customer wants and what your customers need. And schools still got a dollar for each coloring sheet turned in. So they got a total of $100 just for letting me do that. There you go. You go to the school, say, look, this is a fun activity for the kids. If you could put this out there, we're going to pick some winners. And by the way, there's a winner. You pick winners and they get like a $25 gift card to Best Buy or Target or wherever, or $100 in gift cards or whatever. And then we're going to donate a dollar for every coloring sheet that's turned in to, to help you guys out. You got to make it a win-win, everybody. But again, what radio station does the school system listen to? WIIFM, what's in it for me? They don't want people knocking on their door just seeing how you can win, how everybody wants to take advantage of the 500, 600, 800 students in their school and try to solicit their business. Go into a school or a place of business and talk first about how we're going to help them. Right. That's what you got to do. Right. And we'll, we, we may touch on this, but if you don't have a relationship, if you have a relationship, we're getting to the time of year in November here. You can write a, a handwritten thank you card to all of your partners in education. Hey, just want to say thank you so much for being a partner in education. We appreciate you and value you. If you guys need anything at all, please let us know. We hope you have a great holiday season, right? Number one. Then in December, you hit them up with whatever, a fruit basket or stopping in. You cannot just go there when, when you're trying to get something from them. You have to be a true partner in education and you have to have a true relationship, which is a give and take relationship not always just a take so appear there you know and by the way that's the, i love that time of year i love going into the to the businesses into the to the schools bearing gifts and just saying thank you and shaking hands and wishing everybody a great holiday um and that goes a long way with people and if you really really understand relationships with the principals and you know what they do or what they like you know you want to get them a 50 dollars gift card to cabela's because you know they love hunting or whatever you can certainly do that as well I mean, that's kind of going above and beyond, but that's how you ink those 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 relationships and keep those relationships. And don't think for one second that these guys aren't going to tell other people about it. I mean, they have meetings with all of the principals and they're like, oh, my God, we just did an amazing program with, you know, championship martial arts. And we we actually made two thousand dollars on this deal. Right. So there's a lot of talk that goes on. I encourage my guys. I said to my guy yesterday, I said. Now you go back to the two principals that we just had this fundraiser program for that we raised thousands of dollars for and say, hey, listen, can you? I need a favor. Can you guys help me out? Do you know anybody else that could use 2000 bucks in their school? Because we really want to make an impact in our community and would love to be able to do that. Who else do you know? Exactly right. Or you go to the principal and say, hey, if we've been a good partner, I want to be honest with you. We'd like to do this with more schools. Is there any way you could just write a little reference letter about what it's meant to you as having us as a partner in education and share it with some of your other principal friends? But also, if I can get a little reference letter, that'd be great. And then anytime you go meet with another principal that just doesn't even want to hear it, just say, look, I'd like to leave this with you along with a little packet. This is from Ms. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so at XYZ Elementary. Take a look. We'd love to work with you guys, too. By the way, I, I asked Perry if they could just post this. Listen. Click on this and come to Orlando, December 3rd and 4th, see our facilities, and I'm gonna host a two-day event with Mr. Perry and some other speakers, but I'm gonna host this and give you guys so much information. But look, I think, how much is it? 99 bucks, 199 for two people? or $199 for two people, plus that includes dinner. You know, that includes dinner. But look, just, why don't you invest, give us the benefit of the doubt, come see our schools, okay, and come to the seminar and let us show you the information on how we can help this industry become more professional and help you grow your schools. I mean, 
you're sitting there thinking, oh, here we go. He's, I mean, some of you got to be thinking we're trying well, we've to got a ton, we, We've got a ton of clients that are on here already. So what right. I would encourage you guys, by the way, real quick, if you're an elite member or something, you get this. You guys get all this information. You don't need to come here. You, you guys come in and out all the time. You'll be but here in February. If you are an elite member or a foundation member or anything Maya, and you've seen the success or the results, and you think that we can offer and deliver on what we say, here's what I would do. Tag some, tag another martial arts school in this post. Say, hey, check this out, and then you can tell them fast. Well, I'd have them watch the whole thing, especially for mass intros, right? Because that could change their school and the trajectory of their school from the start. But seriously, tag a friend or tag the guy down the street if you want to to check this out. Because as an industry, we just need to become more professional. It's Mets was in the health club industry. I was in health club industry back in the day. We've got a lot of very similar, a lot of similarities. But I remember how hard it was to get a paid in full in the health club industry. And the reason why is because for a long time, they the health clubs would come in and do a pre-sale. The, there was no build out. They do a pre-sale. They do all these paid in fulls. They fold up their folding table and chairs and they take all the money and they go to the next town and start over and do it again. There were lots of scams, lots of gyms that would close. And as a result of that, people were very skittish on doing any sort of a, a term or a commitment at a gym because they just close so fast. And that's what happens. That's what can happen in an industry if we let it. If we can make the martial arts industry more profitable and everybody's better, people are going to feel good about joining a martial arts school because they're around and they're professional and we don't have all of these problems or challenges. And even if they weren't affected, if they know someone, well, yeah, they joined Joe's Karate and they closed down the street. So I don't know if I should join this martial arts school and make that commitment. It helps everybody and that's the, i think the importance that we got to understand we got to think big picture not just about our own schools you know when we look at this which is what this event will absolutely do it will show everybody how to become more profitable in your school not by nickel and diming but by using business systems in the schools more systemized you know yeah. just working a little bit more efficient so you can focus right. more on your your core curriculum but have a system to where we can plug staff members or people into the system and just help you grow your 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 school. So I would love for you to check that out, guys. Come and see. Come, you'll come to our one of our locations, one of our schools. You'll see it. You're also going to see a live holiday event. You'll see a, a live holiday sale, right? Where you'll see how in one day we're generating fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in revenue in one day, right? And I say it all the time without hurting our billing check, and it's not cashing everyone out. It's You'd have to come and see how we do it. But no matter how much we explain it to you through a screen, we learned a long time ago. People don't believe it. So then we started saying every year in December, we're going to do a little business seminar. So that business seminar on Saturday morning will be there and they can see the holiday event and exactly what we do and how we do it. So you can go back and do it yourself. Not even just see it. They experienced it. They walked through the holiday event, like walk through and looked at things where there were parents there. I mean, it, it just the experience of that alone is worth the price of admission. I mean, because it's going to give you a whole different mindset when you get back on how to do that. And Metzger always says this, knowledge is forever. You'll have it forever. and You'll be able to always you know, implement that year after year after year, plus all the other topics that they're covering. So that's worth the price of admission alone, in my, in my opinion, is being able to be there live for that holiday event. Would love to help you guys out, you know, and for those of you who, you know, we obviously recognize a lot of people on here that are part of the Maya team and family, and we appreciate you guys and hope we're still delivering. So, oh, and by the way, if you're a Maya Edge member, you can come to the summit for 149 for two people. Oh. So instead of 199 for two people, 149 if you're a Maya Edge member. So anyway... Uh, and there, there you go. Look, that's exactly, that's exactly how we got him. <laughs> no, he came to it. I remember he came and he was here. He saw a holiday event. I believe you were here for that. Yep, yep. And, uh, you saw the value. You decided you wanted to, you know, jump in and, you know, that's look. And I remember that group. And by the way, this is with all the groups that we do, but I remember that because it was a close group. We were in the conference room actually at above Avalon. And it was a small group and 
Chris Ramos was in that group. He was in that Chris group. Schwartz was in that group. Chris Schwartz was in that group. These guys are all having record years. I mean, it's just it's so much fun to watch and see where they were to where they are now. Because not because of us, but because they've seen the bigger picture. They understand the systems. They execute. They take action, and they're getting results as as, as a result of, of implementing, which is awesome. So great to see. There it is. Well, there it is, guys. Remember, what radio station do your customers listen to? WIIFM, what's in it for me? So make sure that when somebody inquires or comes in and they want to look at enrolling in your school, what is it that they want? And talk about how you can give them what they want and why you are the best solution for what they want. Okay? And the Mets and Pass Therapy Session. Free of charge, no chair required, but one is available when you join Wealth. <laughs> uh, good stuff. There good it stuff. is. So All right. I, thank you, guys. Anything else to ask? Are we good? No, man. I think we're good. I think, you know, if, if, you, if, you, saw, if you liked what you saw, go and execute and take action. If you're not sure what to do, then, you know, get a hold of one of us, and we can certainly help you through that and make sure that you guys are getting results. So appreciate everybody. You know, end of the year is going to be here before we know it. I mean, we're already encroaching mid-November here. And end of the year is going to be here. And another year is going to have passed. And what have we have done different, right? That's the main thing that we got to ask ourselves. So always, as always, appreciate everybody tuning in and watching. If you guys need anything, we're here for you. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. Have a great weekend. Talk to everyone soon. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Vince.